I'm gonna need this today because I'm gonna talk for a while. Welcome to another video. I'm here. I made my background a bit more cozy. Uh, I hope you like it. My makeup looks like a mess. But... So in this video I want to talk about my experience working in the fast food industry like another millennial uh, with a university degree. I'm just kidding. No jobs should be shameful, you know, if you work in like McDonald's or Burger King, in my case the latter, it's fine. Some, you, we all need to do such jobs in a point of our lives and even if you want it as a career, that's fine. I'm not here to trash on that, but yeah, I don't, I don't want a career in fast food or customer service again, especially after that. So yeah, my experience there taught me a lot and mainly played a huge role in me going vegan. So let's get started. Last September I moved to Aberdeen, which is which is in the northeast part of Scotland. It's such a beautiful and quiet place. I really loved it. Uh, sadly, I returned to Greece now because Corona happened. I have a video explaining all this weird situation, but yeah. So when I moved there, I had some savings for my previous job as a waitress and also my parents helped me a lot. I didn't want to take all this for granted and be like, hey, mom, dad, send me more money. I wanted to find a job quickly and this is why I applied to every job ad I found through Indeed or any other job finding platform, like literally every single job. And I didn't mind uh, getting paid minimum wage because I searched it online beforehand and I did the math and with the rent and the bills and the taxes and the food, it was okay and you could end up saving like 200 pounds per month. Not that much, but a budget person anyway, so I felt like it wasn't gonna affect me that much. So yeah, long story short, I found a job after two weeks, which was... It sounds cool, but it's not, because I literally, as I said before, I applied to everything. This includes waitress at cafes, restaurants, bakeries, a salmon factory, litter picking, receptionist at office, hotels cleaner. I I was literally rejected at a cleaner job because I didn't have what it takes. And at some point I applied to work as a caretaker for little kids and for some of you this might sound like uh, a dream job but to me it's a nightmare. I hate kids but I needed a job so I applied and they seemed like they were gonna hire me. And um, I, I ghosted them because it, it really wasn't job for me. So yeah, I had some failed trial shifts at cafes and restaurants. Uh, in one occasion I accidentally spilled a hot tea on a posh old lady. She was fine. She was like, oh good luck on your trial shift. I hope you get hired and I didn't. They never called me. And on the other occasion I got mugged while learning how to make latte art. Yeah, someone broke in the staff room and stole my phone. And then I saw a job ad for Burger King. And I was like, I know this. I've seen this in American movies. Uh, we, we don't have Burger King in Greece. I think I, I've had a burger or two in the past when I was traveling, you know, in airports where you don't find anything good to it. I was like, yeah, fuck it. But other than that, I didn't know shit. I only knew the the Whopper, which is their signature thing. Little did I know that I was gonna learn how to make the whole menu with like my eyes tied. I applied for the job and like as soon as I first applied, they replied with an email um, scheduling an interview. And the other day I went to the interview and got hired on the same day and I was like, wow, easy peasy, that's way, way easier than what I've been through these past two weeks. And 
later on I realized that it's really hard to not get hired in jobs like this. You literally need to look like a psycho killer for you to not get hired. <laughs> right off the bag it was nice. I started working in the kitchen, which was fun, and then went on a teal, which helped me sharpen my communication skills and customer service level. And that was honestly, apart from the money, the only other benefit I had from this job. <laughs> After the first two weeks, I noticed that you basically were expected to make everything right and fast enough. And if you didn't and the restaurant manager happened to be there, you were basically fucked. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. She was a terrible woman. She was really, really horrible. She was a Karen and she was a manager. Like, imagine this deadly combo. Anyway, after the whole new girl thing went away and I was expected to know everything and be good at everything and fast enough, I started having some conflictions with the shift managers and later on the restaurant manager herself, Karen. Let's call her Karen for the, for the sake of the story. So one thing I really hated was the breaks. They forced you to have breaks whenever they wanted and sometimes they forced you have a break really early on your shift and you were basically, if you were hungry or tired or wanted to go to the toilet, it was really hard to do it afterwards and you had to wait until you finish. On top of that, the whole capitalistic uh, mindset was not for me. Basically taught us that uh, quantity over quality is best and you needed to make stuff fast, which meant you need to pre-cook a lot of things, but not too many things, because if the customers turn out to be fewer than we expected, you have to throw all this food away, because you can't serve it, it's cold, and throwing the food away, it's a waste, which I get, and a waste of money, which I also get. You have a business, okay? I'm not stupid, I know how it works but it's just a paradox. So I've seen a lot of occasions of people uh, keeping cold food, not that fresh, because they just didn't have the time to deal with it because the restaurant was always understaffed. Sometimes they sent people home earlier because the profit of the day was lower than they expected and after they sent these people home, a lot of customers showed up and and one occasion I was just me on the teal and I was taking orders for like 30 people. And it's not realistic in a situation like this to expect good quality food. Sometimes I saw people, and I did it myself, because it's, it's, it really, it, you cannot do it. You cannot have someone wait for like an hour and a half for their food when it's a fast food chain. So you have to keep some uh, burgers that were to be thrown away and give it to them. Not because you want to do it, of course I wanted to provide quality, but there, there's a... you cannot do it, you don't have the time to do it, just it's... You cannot have good quality so fast and you cannot have fast, fresh quality food and not have a waste. You really can't. Just choose between it, find the balance, I don't know. I'm not an expert at this. I just, I, try, I was trying to do what they told me and I saw that I couldn't and luckily no one else could, so I wasn't alone doing that. That's what happens when you have an understaffed restaurant. So I'm a very honest person and when I see something I don't like I speak and so I did on many occasions and started fights. I really don't know why they didn't fire me for that. But I just, I couldn't stand see all these things happening and I couldn't stand being yelled at when I tried my best. I was arguing a lot, I was crying a lot before going to my shift, I was crying in the toilet on the break time. It was really a really bad situation to be honest. And I was like a month and a half in me living abroad by myself and needing this job because at the same time I was obviously applying to other jobs. I was like, I, I cannot stand this, this is just a joke. but. I had no luck. So yeah, I, had, I was stuck at that job and I didn't know for how long and that pissed me off uh, because I didn't just want to hop on a plane and go back to my family. I wanted to uh, pressure myself to survive even in circumstances like this. And now you're gonna say you, you should be thankful for even having the opportunity to have a job and I was, I was thankful. It's just 
the whole attitude was what I despised because you can have your employees productive while maintaining a friendly and fun work atmosphere and my work atmosphere at Burger King was hella stressful and demanding when something broke down it was our responsibility to fix it or find an alternative literally no help yeah I found the whole uh, power chain to be very like faulty and like a domino effect because I understand Karen was a horrible restaurant manager but I know that her higher-ups were making her uh, feel like this pressured and stressed to make a profit and so in the sake of profit and money they literally butchered everything else literally yeah this is why after that Karen was a dick to the shift managers and they were dicks to us and sometimes when Karen wasn't there a lot of the shift managers were actually really nice people they showed their true colors and they were friendly and fun and I saw how stress and pressure makes people act and it's not it's not nice I I hated it so after Christmas I got used to this whole situation I even made some friends who had the same opinions as me and we were ranting all the time on break time while going to work while returning to work and it was fine uh, my co-workers literally saved me and made my experience so so much better and I I really hope they're they quit as well one day and they find something they deserve because they truly deserve it they were amazing people all this time i noticed that i barely ate stuff from there i i had my sandwich from home with my avocados and things like that and i sometimes took uh some fries from there uh and water oranges but i never touched the meat because i saw it being cooked all the time and it was so disgusting to me it was literally it was disgusting and it, it, the frozen patties like the frozen things because they were things at the time for me they were literally things they looked so industrialized that I forgot that these ones were living animals and it, it hit me how disconnected we are with the food that ends up on our plates now that I've worked in a kitchen, it makes me question every time I go it outside how the food is treated, how it is handled, is it fresh? And after I went into this mindset, I started questioning even more about the origin of my food. Seeing all this demand for food and dairy in a technologically advanced world where you can have equally tasty plant-based food it finally got to me it's so disgusting i was so happy the quarantine happened and i gotta stay away from that place and i reflected a lot and thought about a lot and i educated myself did some research so yeah quarantine happened i was away from that place and it fed my aversion for any fast chains whether it is food fashion furniture or anything else and also my aversion for meat and dairy uh, I was never a heavy meat eater I occasionally ate some chicken but this whole experience made me want to change all this it really does harm the environment and it's actually healthier if you reduce the meat and dairy I'm not saying to cut the meat completely out of your lifestyle I'm actually not vegan yet completely I'm flexitarian now that I'm in Greece it's really hard to avoid dairy and sometimes meat I find it so problematic that if most people saw how their food ended up on their plates from the slaughterhouse to the factory to the people handling it they wouldn't want to eat it but but no one cares slow and good quality things not just food require a lot of time and money and I understand that some people don't have any of this and I know and understand that some people can't afford this in some places it's really expensive to be vegan and the choices are pretty poor for example I went the other day to the supermarket like the most famous supermarket here in Greece and I couldn't find uh, a huge variety I only saw two products the one was like plant-based meatballs and the other was 
patties and they were pretty expensive you can take materials and make these at home it's fine it's really fun i like cooking the other day i made cauliflower wings with my mom and it was so delicious even my parents who aren't vegan by any means love them but sometimes you really want something quick <laughs> you cannot spend all this time and yeah in this case you need a lot of time to do research because there are foods that are easily made also you can do food prep you can do a lot of things that are nutritious and delicious and it doesn't have to be meat and dairy uh, again if you don't want to cut it out of your life completely that's fine just reduce it <laughs> i really hate the fact that people see these as a sacrifice and that it's really hard to give up on these things I've seen tons of frozen patties and made tons of burgers and I was just doing it like a robot and before questioning all this I was just fine it's a really hard pill to swallow not gonna lie but I feel way way better now that I know and that I know I can help and contribute a bit by doing this and all I'm trying to do is share my story here we live in a such self-centered society that people only care for themselves they don't care about others they don't care about the environment and they choose to have children that they're gonna be raised in a world like this we're currently in a global pandemic and honestly so i hope this made someone think made someone change their mind if you agree i'm glad <laughs> If you disagree, that's fine. I want to go to a place where there is a lot of choice in that. For example, in the UK, there were there were whole aisles of pretty affordable vegan food, and it was a nice experience to to buy different things all the time and experiment. So yeah, that's it for this video. I really have no idea how long I've been speaking. Uh, I hope my memory card isn't full. So anyway, that's it for this video. I'm gonna see you in the next one. Bye! This is the hat. I actually kept it. Oh my god. War flashbacks. Jesus fucking Christ.